This show was underwritten by the Avis and Bruce Richards Family Foundation. Hello, I'm College Football Hall of Famer Don McPherson, and welcome to this week's edition of Lunch NYC. Over the weeks, we've heard about passionate New Yorkers who love to prepare healthy meals. But what if you're like me and just want to sit down with that big bag of chips and watch the ball game? Fortunately, here in New York, there are some creative individuals who have found some interesting ways to make those in-between meals more nutritious. Let's check out what's going on. Vending machines have been around for decades, allowing people to quickly and cheaply get some food. But when it comes to health, not all vending machines are created equal. The problem with the vending machines in general, they are pretty much produced in a cookie cutter fashion. A vending machine is simply a store. You can put anything on the shelves you want in a store. So we simply set up the store so it will be able to display and dispense the kind of products that will help our young people, give them proper fuel uh, to work and learn and play throughout the day so they can enjoy the experience of school. I think what we're doing now and the emphasis we're placing on this in the school environment is extremely valuable. Uh, the schools is where we're going to create our next generation uh, for this country. One of the things we encourage with, with school food service directors is to reach out to the other departments in the school. We bring to bear basically the full capabilities, technology and operations of the major elite vending companies and we bring them right down to the single school level for just one machine, empowering the nutrition department to make more money, have less grief, and yet still provide a platform for nutritional beverages and snacks. Aveda Institute decided to give its students a snack machine that matched its philosophy. Human stands for helping unite man and nutrition, and the mission is to really provide healthy snacks through healthy vending machine options in, people, in places where people frequent the most, schools, gyms, workplaces, community centers. Vending machines were your last resort. It was your last resort to get a snack if you didn't have something on you and there wasn't any food options around. I think we're trying to change the mentality that now healthy vending is an option for you to seek out, that it can be something that can really provide you something healthy and nutritious and filling. This vending machine uses 50% less energy than the typical standard old version vending machine. These have LCD screens so they can give you tips, information about the products. Old vending machines, you can't see what the ingredients are on any of the snacks in the machine, so if you have a gluten allergy or a dairy or a wheat allergy, you don't really know what you're getting. You have to be very well educated. With these machines, they can tell you what's in these snacks so you know what you're getting and what you're selecting. Aveda really focuses on wellness and health, as does human, and I think the eco portion of it was also very important to Aveda with saving energy as well as providing healthy options for their students and their staff. With old vending machines, you would have to go on a route and circle around and consistently see if something was low. With these vending machines, they alert you to let you know that something is low. So in essence, also kind of taking down your carbon footprint so you're not consistently going around checking on the machines. There's a statistic out that said students get 33 to 50% of their total calorie intake from snacks and vending machines. So we're really trying to focus on schools and school programming to get healthy options into schools. There needs to be this shift where we start thinking snacks need to also be healthy options because they do add up. At 30 Rockefeller Center, NBC Universal's commitment to healthy snacks for its employees extends beyond its space-aged vending machine. Eating healthy on the go in a snack format is, it's tough, right? You know, some of the most convenient things to eat are usually the least healthy. We have to put things out there in our vending machines that people can grab any time of the day that they can immediately identify as, you know, this is something that's healthy for me. In the off hours when the commissary isn't open, we have the healthy vending machine option, which is called a 2BU. And it's provided a bunch of organic options, healthy options. The selections are all focus on organic and healthy items, whether it's sugar content, calorie content, sodium. So nothing in this machine is unhealthy. A media company is a 24-7 operation. 
and it's busy and people work all the time. We have people here every hour of the day and it's a hectic lifestyle. So one of the things that we really wanted to do was make it convenient for employees, make it easy for employees to be healthy and to eat healthy. The two main ways that we identify the healthy foods for NBC is that there's the, the Fit logo on the inside of the commissary. We kind of created this umbrella of go healthy with NBCU. So within all the potato chips that we offer and grab-and-go snacks in this section, we make sure that we keep it within 150 calories a snack. It's a lot easier to sell something that tastes good than something that's not approachable. The availability of local produce is important. I don't think it's necessarily something that employees seek out, but I think that when they come here and they find out the things that we're doing, both from a health standpoint and from an environmental standpoint, I think it makes them feel better about eating in our food service facility. There is a wide variety of people who eat here, vegetarians, vegans, um, people who you know love their meat and potatoes. I would say we feed close to 1,700 people a day um, between breakfast and lunch. In the last five years, there's a big push towards healthy eating. Even the people that aren't big fans of healthy eating, sometimes will try just a plain roasted tilapia with a mango salsa and say, wow, I never knew, you know, that could be so delicious. I had no idea, you know. So it's, it's rewarding and um, very enjoyable. The more that we can do, you know, to educate, obviously, our television audiences, but as well as our employees, I think we have, you know, you know healthier employees. I think we have happier employees. I think we have more engaged employees. Um, and I think it's important that if we're going to go out, you know, to market with Healthy at NBC Universal, that we do the same inside this company with our employees as well. People are going to snack. I think it's who we are as a society. And if they're going to snack, we might as well provide them with healthy vending machine options to fulfill that need. It can be great. It's our choice. From schools to businesses to hospitals, more and more health-oriented snack machines are popping up, giving all kinds of New Yorkers healthier options to satiate that hunger. Kids love the color and taste of cheese, but there's a lot for parents to love about it too. Low-fat cheese is rich in both calcium and protein, helping out with bone and muscle growth, as well as skin and tissue repair. And it's portable too. Individually wrapped low-fat cheese, such as string cheese and baby Swiss wheels, are quick snacks you can bring anywhere, and kids love them. Pair these cheese with fruit for an extra dose of fiber and protein. So next time you're looking for the perfect snack to bring with you, always remember to say cheese. You see them on almost every corner of the city and can smell them from blocks away. Food carts, they're a fast, mobile way to get a quick snack that are unique to New York. The question is, are they as good for you as they are convenient? Lunch NYC took a look at some of the more interesting carts trucking around the city. 100% vegan, low calorie, and all natural, Indian super snack dosas are the specialty of Washington Square Park's aptly named Dosa Man cart. I actually wanted to do like something different, like nobody's doing it. That's why I started the special vegan dosa cart. So I'm the first man to start a like ethnic food cart, like a vegan vegetarian. And most of the stuff I learned from my grandmother. It's one of the healthier options in the neighborhood, so uh, why not? It gets me out of the office for a little bit too. 60% stuff we use is organic, you know, fresh every day. Price range is like very, like very cheap. You know, we never change our price. Like everything, one dollar to six dollars. I think most New York City street food is pretty unhealthy. You really never see it uh, made to order, uh, which is why the the dosa man's so great. He makes everything right in front of you. So what I make, you won't get it in the restaurant or even in India. Because this is all different type of dosa I make with a lot of veggies. Some veggies you don't even get it in India. You know, we are in Washington Square Park, mm -hmm. so very good, cheap, healthy vegan food. Looking for a healthy bite steamed to perfection right in front of your eyes? Rick Shaw's dumpling truck can be found all around Midtown. Right now we have one restaurant on 23rd Street. We're in the process of opening up another store, and then we have three trucks cruising around the city. I think the, a couple differences between kind of what we're doing and a lot of the other carts is that, number one, we're doing Asian food, and there aren't a lot of trucks out there that are doing Asian food. We steam everything fresh here on the truck. Because we steam them, they're much healthier, and they also have a much longer hold time, which is really great for when people get really busy and the line gets really long. I think the people that work in offices, especially where we are, like today in Midtown here, people really want something something that's fresh, they want something that's healthy, and they want something that's really, really fast. It's often the case that the people selling you 
with your lunch are the people that own this business. And so it truly is a sole proprietorship or a partnership, and they really have a vested interest um, near and dear to their heart um, that you have a good customer service experience and you enjoy your lunch, so you'll come back, and it's great. Our most popular dumpling is probably the chicken and Thai basil dumpling. We do cater to vegetarians. We have a vegan uh, dumpling option, which is a whole and pureed edamame dumpling with a whole wheat wrapper. Um, we have a Peking duck dumpling that is fantastic, and we use locally grown Hudson Valley duck. Using organic and really healthy products from a business is that it really shows that we're committed to giving you guys the best ingredients as customers. I think the trend in food trucks is definitely more trucks where people are really caring and loving of the ingredients and the foods that they prepare and use. Snow cones have always been a staple of food trucks. Kelvin Slush has upgraded the idea for grown-ups interested in natural ingredients and flavors at its Flatiron area truck. This was actually an idea that I came up with uh, along with a, a friend of mine a couple of years ago. So we wanted to offer a more grown-up, a little less sweet, all-natural alternative that as a young adult you could drink. Uh, so we don't use any preservatives, any processed sugars. Uh, it's really just all natural uh, ingredients. We have three flavors that we offer. We offer ginger, citrus, and tea. Um, and then to those, the customers can add in their choice of real fruit puree or fresh uh, herbs or various other mix-ins, such as chopped basil, chopped mint, um, pomegranate seeds. Uh, it's been very well received. There's been a great response uh, from the people. You know, I can only imagine that it's going to continue to grow. Uh, I think over the last few years there's definitely been uh, somewhat of an explosion of these high-end food trucks and, you know, it doesn't seem as though it's going to let up. There are hundreds of healthy local trucks on the go in the city and with new ones popping up all the time, a fresh snack might be just around the corner from your work or home. What's in it? You ever think, what's in it? If you are what you eat before a meal or treat, stop and think, what's in it? We all love to snack, but knowing when and what to munch on can be confusing. Lunch NYC had New Yorkers ask NYU nutritionist Lisa Sasson their snack-related questions. Uh, hi, Lisa. My name's Corey, and I had a question for you. I'm wondering if there's any limit to the amount of meat I should be eating each day? It's probably not healthy to eat red meat more than once or twice a week. Red meat is very high in saturated fat. So I would restrict it to a couple of times a week and small portions. A portion size is about the size of a deck of cards and the thickness of a deck of cards. I go rowing four days a week. I would like to know which snack I could use after to get my energy back. Rowing, wow, that's great. Not many people are doing rowing these days. So if you're doing rowing, that uses a lot of energy. And the snack I would recommend after the workout is to make sure you're hydrated and you eat carbohydrates. That's the most important source of fuel. So if you drink things like juice or you have things like pretzels, crackers, and high carbohydrate beverages, that's a great way to replenish the energy you've used from rowing. Hey Lisa, I want to know, uh, what's the best snack to have before my workout? You should really time your meals at least an hour before the event. Working out on an empty stomach, you have to be realistic. If you're getting up at 5 o'clock to swim, I don't expect someone to get up at 4 to eat. So what's really important is make sure the night before you have a good dinner and maybe a light snack before you go to sleep. And then when you get up, you can have something to drink. Well, the most important thing to remember is to stay well hydrated. That's critical. Hi, Lisa. I'm Jeff. Uh, I missed breakfast today and lunch is in an hour. Should I have a snack now or wait? If you're hungry, I suggest to have something small. I don't like when people are ravenous when they eat their meal because a lot of times you don't have self-discipline and you overeat. So you have to gauge that. If you feel like I'm really, really hungry, Go for it, have a small snack, and then you could have a normal sized meal. You may not eat breakfast, but go Mariners. Mama gives me lots of chocolate. So we also want to know if sugar will keep you up, either me or her. Well, I hope you're not taking that line from Mary Poppins, just a spoonful of sugar. Really giving sugar to your child is not healthy. 
The best thing to do is to give them healthy meals and healthy snacks. That's what's going to sustain their energy, not sugar per se. She eats a lot of fruits. It's good for her. Or maybe vegetables are better. Oh, this is just such a wonderful question. I wish everyone had this decision or problem. Both are fabulous choices. I would just say variety and to expose your young child to lots of different fruits and vegetables. Hey, so my name is Lewis. I snack about 12 to 15 times a day. It's kind of like a great white shark. I'll eat just about anything. Is there any good alternatives to like cupcakes and ring things and like basic garbage? <laughs> Hi, great white shark. Lewis, the reason you're so hungry is I think you're very active. You do demolition all day. So your body needs a lot of energy, and that's why you're hungry. So the first thing is I want to make sure you're having healthy, satisfying meals. You could have nuts, dried fruits, fruits and vegetables, small sandwiches on whole grain bread. Stay away from those cigarettes. Stay away from junk food and focus on having healthy snacks. Something like a peanut butter sandwich is a great sustaining energy food. What's really important to being healthy is not just what you eat. It's really your lifestyle. Best advice is to have healthy meals focusing on foods that are more from nature than are processed. And having a snack is really good, but make sure, again, you're having healthy snacks. You're going to feel better, and you're going to have a lot more energy. If you have any questions you'd like answered by a nutrition, fitness, food, or health expert, please go to our website and submit them. Those of you who run know what a pain muscle fatigue can be for a workout. Cramps and that tiredness feeling is caused in part by a lack of potassium inside your cells. Fruits such as bananas provide a healthy level of potassium, which will help with recovery and alleviate cramps. Apricots also contain calcium and other electrolytes and are an excellent source of fiber. Dried apricots are easy to throw in a bag and take on the go, so they make the perfect runner snack. Take some with you the next time you run and you'll be hitting that second wind in no time. If there's a need for something new, chances are a New Yorker is working on it, and that includes healthy snacks. Welcome to the Kale Factory, located in Crown Heights, Brooklyn, at 925 Bergen Street, Brooklyn, New York. We started off just deciding to make kale chips just because of the demand. What makes kale so nutritious is the iron, vitamin D, um, vitamin A. It definitely is up there with the most nutritious green you can eat. One of these uh, kale bunches fits into one box of kale chips, if not more. If you eat a box of kale chips, you're eating 12 grams of fiber. They taste like um, Doritos for health nuts. Well, this is where we store our dry ingredients, like dehydrated red blood peppers, sea salt, celery seed powder, and we mix dry ingredients with fresh ingredients so that it, the kale chips can taste really tasty. Our first flavor was um, vegan cheese, and then um, we added a second flavor called spicy miso, and then very recently added Bombay Ranch, which became an instant hit. This is where the kale chips get dehydrated. They'll get laid into the dehydrators, and then in the morning, they're pulled out and boxed for delivery. When you dehydrate vegetables like kale, it retains all of the nutrients, the iron, vitamin D. So it's almost like eating a fresh salad in a box. The demand is so high, people like to eat kale chips. BOW stands for Badass Organics. Kombucha is a drink that's been around for 2,500 years. You make it by taking a uh, organic tea uh, of a mixture of your choice. We use a, a blend of green and black tea. We add a probiotic bacteria culture to the tea, which consumes the majority of the sugar. We leave a little sugar left behind to give a little sweetness, but the resulting beverage is a little bit more on the sour side of the palate. A serving of kombucha has less than 40 calories. One of the things we also really like about Bao is that we're trying to be a local beverage manufacturer in New York City. We want to be New York's brand. It's represented a lot in our name and the product. We're looking to roll out a whole slew of products targeting better, healthier, and more nutritious drinks for all New Yorkers. By changing the flavor profile, hopefully, of what people expect in a beverage, we can give them something that's really tasty, that's really low in calories, and that's really good for them. These are savory fried pies. It's traditional Finnish pie. It's very healthy. It's uh, very low calorie. And also rye flour itself, it's, it's, it's really good grain. It's uh, low uh, with gluten. 
but high in protein. I'm really trying to uh, support local farmers. For example, I buy rye flour from a local farmer. The rice filling is a traditional Finnish pie. But then we have spinach and garlic and rice filling with beet and feta cheese. And this is a vegan sweet potato with caramelized onions and rosemary. I have really nice regular customers. They come every week and buy the, yeah, it's the same pies. Have you purchased these before? I have. I actually lived in Finland for a little while. So I know, I already knew what they were. So I was very excited <laughs> that they were here actually. There's some interesting history behind the chia seed, and it actually was originated with the Aztec warriors. Legend has it that they used to actually go out to battle and take nothing but chia seeds, a pouch of chia seeds, and water with them, and that would sustain them for a week's worth of battle. Everybody's a warrior. Everybody's out there. They've got their own little personal ba battle that they're fighting, and, and listen, you know, 95% of us have a weight problem that we're trying to, trying to control. It's similar to oatmeal in the consistency, so, so you feel very full. They're packed with antioxidants, omega-3s, fiber, and protein. In addition to that, they also were packed with calcium, magnesium, potassium, more potassium than bananas. There's so many benefits. I've, I've stopped drinking coffee. I, I really just drink the chia water. It's increased energy. Not, it's not a Red Bull, but it's sort of just a steady energy as well as increased focus. It's really our goal to educate, motivate, and inspire people to eat right. And what better place than New York City? With a greater need for healthy, fresh foods, more entrepreneurs are stepping up to the plate and creating great tasting new ways to eat a quick snack. When leading a healthy, exercise-filled lifestyle, it's important to know what to snack on and when, and that includes snacks. Remember to have a snack two or three hours before your workout. That'll keep you satisfied and help prevent post-workout binging. Choose snacks that are a combination of carbohydrates and proteins to build muscle, yet are small enough not to interfere with your activity. Turkey on one slice of bread or apples with peanut butter will give you a really good boost without burning off too quickly. By combining an active routine and healthy eating, you'll be on your way to a healthier lifestyle. I'm Dylan. I'm always hungry and I'm always looking for a new restaurant in New York City. But here's the thing, it has to be healthy. Let's visit all five boroughs to find the best healthy food in New York City. Hi, I'm here in Central Park and I'm hungry for a snack. So I'm going to check out Good To Go Organics where they have grass-fed beef and organic hot dogs. Let's check it out. Hi, I'm Dylan. Hey, I'm Andrew. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm good to see you. So, how'd you get the idea to open an organic food stand in Central Park? So, that's a, good, that's a great question. So, the idea behind and the genesis behind Good To Go Organics is the idea of bringing quality food to the streets of Manhattan, and in this case, to the streets of Central Park. So we serve sort of up the middle food that people love to eat. We serve right. burgers, we serve hot dogs. The only take on it is, is that we serve organic hot dogs, organic sausages, and all the meat that we serve is grass fed and all natural. So how fresh is your beef? So to give you an example, um, you know, this is, the, this is beef that's from Kinderhook wow. Farm. We went up to the farm this morning it's in Ghent, New York. We went up there this morning and picked that up. And, uh, you know, they're really excited about the idea of having a program that's in place that allows them to grow the product. A lot of the farms that exist in the Hudson Valley, a lot of the problems that they have is they just can't find the actual market to sell their products. So we're really solving that problem right. for them. The difference between Good To Go Organics and other vendors that are out there is the, the selection of hot dogs you can get. At our cart, you don't get just beef, you can also get chicken and right. turkey. In addition to that, you've got, uh, the, the products are made by Applegate. So there's no nitrates, there's no preservatives, there's no antibiotics in any of the meat that's used that you're gonna eat at the cart. So no funny stuff. That's right, there's just no funny stuff. It's all meat, all chicken, all turkey, all beef, stuff that you wanna eat that tastes great, and let's go over and try one. All right. I wanna introduce you to Max Adler. He's Hi. our operations manager. Nice to meet you. How you doing, Dylan? This is uh, Muhammad. He's our vendor here six days a week uh, selling organic hot dogs, and uh, he's going to set you up with uh, something delicious to try. There we go with 
friend. This is a real hot dog in a hot dog bun, and this is a other sausage and whole wheat pita bread, azuri pita. Wow, smells great. Thank you. So how is it, Dylan? It's great. This is the first time I've ever had a sausage dog. <laughs> Can you taste the difference? Definitely. Awesome. Well, thanks for stopping by and uh, come back to Good To Go Organics for uh, organic hot dogs and sausages soon. I'll be back. When you want a quick, healthy snack in New York City, go to Good To Go Organics. They have grass-fed beef and an organic hot dog. They have two locations in Central Park and one opening up in Chelsea Pierce. I'm definitely going again. Thank you for joining us on another hell-filled episode of Lunch NYC. This week, we saw a whole new fleet of snack carts bringing healthy food to the people and learn tips about what to munch on between meals. Join us next week for more health-driven initiatives happening right here in your city. See you then. Funding provided by...